Hello and welcome to Droix. In this video we are checking out the GameForce Retro Gaming Handheld. We unbox it, take a look at the specs and features, then put it through its paces with a look at the performance across a dozen or so emulators. Let's get started with the unboxing. Inside the box we have a carry case. The case is a green colour for all three colour variants of the Game Force. We have a user guide which covers everything you need to know how to get started and operate the Game Force. There is a cloth for cleaning the screen. There is a USB Type-C charge cable which can be plugged into any USB charger you have. And last but not least is the GameForce Retro Gaming Console itself, which we will take a closer look at in a moment. As standard, the GameForce does not come with a micro SD card or operating system. We will include a 64GB micro SD card which comes pre-installed with Emuilac and RetroArch, but it does not contain any games. You will need to copy any games you own to the card. We will have a guide on how to do this, which you can find a link to in the description. GameFalls has a 3.45 inch TFT IPS screen with a resolution of 640x480. You have a D-pad and four gaming buttons. There are dual analog sticks made by Alps, which are the same used on the PlayStation Vita. On the left are two additional buttons which you can configure to your preference. In the middle is the home button, also known as the hotkey, which is used in combination with other buttons to perform functions. On the right we have select and start buttons. On the bottom of the handheld are a 3.5mm headphone port, USB Type-C charge port and reset button. It measures approximately 6 by 3.5 by 1 inches at its thickest part. On the top you can find left and right shoulder and trigger buttons. And in the middle are the power button and micro SD card slot. The Game Force is available in three shell colours. Orange, Desert Tan and Green. A brief look at the tech specs tells us that it features the Rockchip RK3326 quad-core processor. This is also used in devices such as the Ambonic RG351 series. It's a good processor for Andel retro gaming. There is 1GB of DDR3 RL RAM, which is plenty for the operating system and supported emulators. It has a 3000 mAh rechargeable battery. Micro SD cards up to 512 gigs are supported. Other features include Wi-Fi and dual vibration motors for feedback. The GameForce uses the Emu Elect frontend and RetroArch for the emulators. Other software support is planned for the future by the developer. Once you have added your games for the supported systems, you will see them on the menu which can be navigated. As you can see, we have copied some games for various systems including Atari 2600, Arcade, PC Engine, Master System, Genesis, 32X, Mega CD, PlayStation, Dreamcast and PSP. The main menu gives a wealth of options including a few custom ones for the game force. You are able to change the backlighting over several colours which once applied light up the d-pad and buttons. It's a nice feature. You can also change the power LED behaviour with options to switch off and on as well as a heartbeat style pulse. Other options include the network setting screen from which you can connect to a Wi-Fi access point in order to download updates 
scrape game data and play multiplayer games. The updates and downloads keeps the handheld up to date as well as being able to download other themes for example. There is also the quit menu which you should always use to safely shut down the game force. You can use the home key to perform shortcuts such as home plus x to access the retro arch menu. From here you can save and load game states, take screenshots, reconfigure the controls and much more. While playing the game you can hold the home key and press start twice to easily quit the game and return back to Emu Elac. With the built in Wi-Fi you can easily set up and play multiplayer games over the internet with friends. It does require you to use the same game ROM and emulator and not all systems are supported but consoles like the Genesis run great for multiplayer. A quick interlude to mention to like and subscribe if you are enjoying this video. Also don't forget to check out our other social media including Facebook, Instagram and Twitter for news, updates and some awesome giveaways that will be starting very soon. Let's take a look through just some of the many gaming systems supported from the earliest to latest. Starting with the Atari 2600 and the classic Pac-Man. For all the early systems you will not have any issues with slow emulation speed, lag etc. Moving forward to the Vectrix, I did not have a chance to add the overlay which the original system use, but it is very easy to download and add overlays to any system such as the Vectrix. Another Atari system next, the 7800. It was less popular than the 2600, but it was backwards compatible with the games. It was the first console to do this. The Sega Master System also launched around the same time as the 7800. It was not as popular as the classic grey console in the USA, but it did very well in Europe. Also launched around the same time is the great PC Engine, also known as TurboGrafx-16, which has some great games and arcade ports. Heading into the 16-bit systems, we have the Sega Genesis, also known as the Mega Drive. There are many great games to play on this, including the excellent Gunstar Heroes. Following this is the 32X hardware add-on for the Genesis. It was not massively popular, but again it did have some great games including Space Area, Knuckles Chaotix and Blackthorn. Arcade systems cover most of gaming's history, so I have put it in the middle. With the MAME and Final Burn emulators, you are covered for many classic arcade games from over the years. The more modern CPS3 game systems runs just fine on the Game Force. Heading into the 90s we have the highly prized Neo Geo console which every kid wanted but few could actually afford. If you love fighting games then you will be in heaven on the Neo Geo, but there's plenty of other genres including the decent Blazing Star scrolling shooter. The Mighty PlayStation was launched in the mid 90s and saw an amazing range of games. I was suggested to play Destruction Derby 2 by a Twitter follower, so here I am having a smash in time. There are some games that do not run well, but there are equally many that run great. Just before the turn of the millennium we have Sega's final console, the Dreamcast. It is here where we will see a mix of games that run great and not so great. Depending on the game you may experience some slowdown either overall or during busy scenes and with others they will be perfectly playable. And we finish up with the PlayStation Portable which was released in 2004. Yeah, it's really that old. Like the Dreamcast, there is quite a mix of what games will and won't run well. But overall, the RK3326 processor does a decent job, 
with a good number of playable titles. The Game Force is a very good alternative to the RG351 series of retro gaming handhelds, especially considering that the Game Force was created by one person, which is an amazing achievement. The console feels very comfortable to hold over long periods of gaming. The backlit D-pad and buttons are a great idea, especially with it having several colours. Having built-in Wi-Fi from the start is a great feature as it lets you keep everything up to date and play multiplayer games with friends. As an alternative to the RG351 series, the Game Force is definitely one to consider if you are interested in a retro gaming handheld. We hope you have found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe to keep up to date with our new products. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you in our next video.